successful trader after she developed her own system for trading that relies on capitalizing on the big moves that occur near the open of the stock market every day. She's built an international business that informs clients how to trade successfully utilizing her system. All right, and we will get Melissa's screen all set up and begin in just a few minutes. So I hope you guys enjoy her and the rest of our presenters today. Testing, can you hear me? And I don't know if you can see the slide. I don't know if you can, can you see it? Oh, there we go. Can everybody see? Well, I can hear you and see you loud and clear. So if everyone else can, can you please just let us know and type in a yes or a why in the questions box? Okay, great. Good morning, everyone. I want to get started here. It's 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday, October 9th. Earning season starts this week. Going to be a good, good quarter here to final, finally close out the end of 2018. So welcome. If you have any questions when we go along, just type it in the box. I will see it. And I'm going to talk today about one simple strategy to trade the market successfully. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh. So I focus on one strategy every morning in the market, and it's gaps. And I'm gonna show you what a gap is here if you are interested. And again, if you're interested, you can always email me or you can call me or type in a question. My email is melissa at thestockswoosh.com. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Skype. And you can also watch me on Fox News and Fox Business Network, which I appear talking about the market every week. So we're getting into the end of the year, as I just said. If you have never traded before, now's a good time to start because it's a busy trading season in the fall calendar period. Now, if you have been trading, if you've been trading all of the year, the first nine months of the year, and you haven't been successful, it's still a good time to reevaluate. Why are you not successful if you're not? Is a strategy you're using not working? Um, is it the market conditions? What's going on? Now, the market's been dropping for the last few days. I haven't seen where we're at right now in the last 15 minutes, but the market has been very bullish all of 2016, 17, 18. And yet, guess what? Most of the trades that I've been looking at that we do in the morning are shorts. Now, sometimes we will go long. I'm not opposed to going long. However, most of the trades, most of the gaps are short so you can make money shorting in a bullish market which may sound unusual but i'm looking for weakness and here was a good example so this was friday's trade now for those of you who don't know what a gap is i'm going to go over that right here this morning a gap is a difference between the close and the open this is costco costco had earnings out thursday night it's the daily chart you can look down here and see down here the days costco closed the night before this was again thursday four o'clock eastern time then it reported, then it had earnings, then it gapped down. So a gap is the difference between the close and the open. So that means that a stock will close at one price at four o'clock, that's when the US market closes, and it opens at 9.30 the next day. So I'm looking for stocks that are gapping each and every day. And as I said, I'm looking for stocks usually, mostly, first I will go to looking for shorts, okay? So I'm looking mostly for gap downs, and then I'm looking to rate them using my system to determine if it is a good one if it is going to go lower or if it's going to go higher in which case obviously you'd want to go long it but in the case of costco here it was a short it was a really good short this had a huge move of the day this is a really big play now what could you have done with this you, you see it in the morning <coughs> excuse me or you see it at night because it actually reported in the after hours after four and then you would look at it and you would rate it using technical analysis. This is what you'd learn if you come and did my class or if you traded with me in the live room, I would say Costco is a good one. It rates this many points. And then we would look to get an entry in it. Now, because of the price point, you could have done it as a put. You could have bought a put, which means it would be an option trade where you wouldn't need margin. Or if you day traded it, you would have shorted it as a day trade and it had a really big move. Actually, the move in Costco on the day from tip to the top to the bottom was almost 10 bucks. Huge move in Costco, okay? Anyways, here's the sell-off. So this is, this is simply as this, is what I'm looking for every single, single, single day. 
I get up in the morning, I look at what stocks are gapping, I rate them before 9.30 before the open, determine if there's anything good to do, and if it sets up, I do it. If it doesn't, we don't do anything at all, okay? So I'm looking every day for what? I'm looking for a sell-off if we're shorting, or if we're looking to go long, we're looking for a big move up, we're looking for buying. So here is the sell-off in Costco. This was amazing, okay? Again, 15 minute chart here in this, you can see where the stock gapped. It closed here, gapped down. So it closed up here again around 231-ish, open in the morning here around 224.50-ish or whatever, I don't know the exact price, what it was. So the stock closed at one price and gapped down. So when you're looking to trade, and I don't care if you're swing trading, day trading, doing options, you have to have a strategy that you follow that consistently works. You can't do one thing on a Monday, one thing on a Tuesday, one thing on a Wednesday, okay? First of all, you'll never get good at any strategy at all if you're doing a million different things. And second of all, okay, you have to have the consistency. The consistency that I have comes with looking for the same thing every single day. It's like an imprint. And again, like I said, I focus on technical analysis. So I'm reading charts, I'm a chart reader. I'm predicting where stock's gonna go based on the chart. And that is something you can do. Whether, I'm gonna go back to this here, whether Costco gapped down or gapped up, whether the earnings were positive or negative or whatever the earnings report said, I don't even focus on that, okay? I don't read the reports. I don't focus on fundamentals. You don't need that in order to make money in the market. Also, you wouldn't have time. And oftentimes, that is priced into the way the stock is trading in the price point, okay? Makes sense? Any questions so far as we're going along here? Let me know. So anyways, Costco was a short. So entry on this was 224.95. Short it, you would short the stock. Share quantity here was 3,000. Exit 218.90. Beautiful move, drop. Again, you're shorting your stock. You wanna get the drop, you wanna get the sell off. And again, here it was. Boom, 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 boom. It was a straight sell off down. You don't get this in every single trade, but in the case of Costco, you did. It sold off all day after the rally. It was a good gap and also you had the market with you on Friday. Huge profit in this. So this is a day trade. I also call the put in this. So if you could not have, if you couldn't have taken this account of margin with 3,000 shares, which was an advanced risk, then you could have bought the put. So you could have bought the put, but you still would have had a beautiful drop, okay? $6 plus. Profit was $18,150 in Costco on Friday in one trade. One single solitary trade. You could have done the day trade and you could have done the put. Now, what if you can't take an advanced risk? Well, we're gonna talk about a couple examples here today. For a beginner risk, if you can't take an advanced risk, the point is, whether you risk $100 or whether you risk $1,000 in a trade that's profitable, like Costco was, you can make money. The idea is to build it up. So you're building up your account and you're learning as you go, which is something that a lot of people just, just don't understand because they never really grab hold of and learn what they need to learn to be successful. But that's very important, okay? A lot of people say, well, I'm not successful because of my discipline. Well, that may be true. There are people that are that have horrible, horrible discipline. But quite frankly, if you shorted Costco and were the unmost, most disciplined person in the world, you you would have you would have made money on Friday. Okay, it was a great call. It was a huge move down. Okay, you would have to be crazy to have somehow screwed up this trade on Friday. You need to look for directional bias wherever the stock is going. How do you make money in the market? You get in a trade in the right direction before the move happens. And that's what I see, I'm just gonna go back here, that's what I see in the gap. So I'm seeing that in the gap and then I'm looking for it and then I am rating it and trying to figure it out in the pre-market, okay? I'm always looking for it before, before the open. And that's where I'm prepped and I say, okay, maybe I say there's nothing good today or I say we've got two good ones, we'll watch two or however many we're watching, okay? Any questions on Costco? I don't see any current questions here. I'm gonna keep going. Anyways, here was another good one, FDX. This was back in September. This was earnings too. What did, what did it do? It gapped down. This was another short. Here's the daily bar. So this depicts the selling action, the sell-off. Stock closed here the night before at 256. 
Open, boom. Gap down in the morning around 250-ish. Stock sold off. Another huge move. This was almost $10 in the day as well. Two big movers here in the last month, and we'll see more of these. Why? It's earnings season. Earnings season, the banks report Friday. Wells Fargo, JP Morgan Chase, Citibank, they all report Friday, and they're going to gap. I don't know what they do or where they go or how to play them until they do, but I know they're out Friday morning. It's probably going to move the market. Anyways, this is a big sell-off. Boom. Okay. So this here, you would have gotten up in the morning and you would have weighed in it and determined, is this going to be a long or is this going to be a short? Because you have to determine where it's going to go so you can watch it so you know how to trade it. If you don't know and you're waiting, you're missing the profit. Okay, that's the beauty of what I do. I'm predicting it. I'm not predicting the gap. I'm predicting the move it's going to make on the open after I see the gap. Okay? And that's how you know, and you could do it as a swing trade, you could do it as a day trade, or you could do it as an option, depending on whether or not you want to trade with a margin account or do you want to actively day trade. So, uh, you know, everybody starts at the beginning on this road to success, the stairs to success to make it as a day trader. And I don't care if you want to do this part-time on the side, if you want to dibble dabble in it, if you want to do it full-time as your job, either way, your goal is to be successful. Whether you are doing this for part-time income or as your full-time income, your goal should be to be successful, which means what? You need to be profitable, you need to make money. And that's why I'm saying if you've been trading from January till now and you're not profitable for the calendar year of 2018, then you're clearly doing something wrong and you need to stop. So many people risk money in the market and have no clue what to do. And one of the things that I've, one of the decisions I've made that was a good decision for clients, for customers is, no one can join my live trading room unless they've taken my gap class. So they have to learn the system to have the knowledge to know what to do before they take any live trades. Now I do offer a trial for the room for one week, but I don't think it's a good idea for people to risk money if they don't know what to do, okay? Very, very important to know what to do. How can you risk $1,000? How can you risk $50 if you don't know what to do or why? Like if you don't know why Costco is a short. Okay, I have a question here. Small. How do you rate? How do you rate entry exit on one minute charts? I rate it here. Hold on. I rate it on the daily chart. The ratings on the daily. I rate. So I in the pre market. I my system. If you come and learn it, I rate it on the daily chart. But we're playing the trade in the one minute chart again. As a day trader, you have to get in and out before four o'clock. So you got to get in between nine thirty and four, and out between nine thirty and four. That's it. So I'm. That's, that's the beauty of what I'm doing. I'm looking at a minuscule time frame, which the smallest one I don't trade on a tick chart is the one minute. I'm looking to get in, get out, get in, get out, because really all you need is a quick move. And I will tell you, most of the trades we do are, we're in and out by 10 o'clock. Now, Costco was different. We had the market with us. I'm not saying you have to kill a trade if it's still going at 10 a.m. If it's still going and dropping, stay with the trade if you're up in the trade. But most of the trades were done and out early in the morning. But if something falls all day and you have the market power trading down Friday, you can stay with it. But we're trading on the one minute chart. We're trading on the miniature time frames, even though we're rating it on the daily to determine the directional bias. And that's the beauty of the system because you still need to put in a stop. You still need to have a set place where you will kill the trade. And you still need to get in and out before four. Otherwise, you're taking it in overnight. And then obviously, if you're, if you're a day trader, you're going to be a two to one margin which is a lot different than trading on a day trading margin during the active day. But options are different. We all will talk about a couple different option trades. We're going to go over Facebook. That was another great call I made that was a put. Options, you just pay for the cost and you can hold it overnight. But we're not holding these day trades overnight. So we're trading in the one minute, but we rate it on the daily. But when I'm calling the entries in the room and I'm saying boom, boom. When I'm, if I say 10 by 50, first number is the entry, second one's a stop. We're taking them and I'm calling it on the one minute. Okay, that's a good question. Um, okay, I just I just thought I'd show you here. This is the last eight weeks. Now August was partial of the last end of the last earnings season. September was very slow. October's been October has been a very strong start to this month. It's only been a week, but in the last eight weeks again advanced risk. Some of the trades were about eighteen hundred dollars in risk. So most of them were about $1,500 in risk, but anywhere between $1,500 and $2,000 risk in these trains, you would have made $83,000. This is all the calls in the room. This is no options. It's just the day trades. You can see here from these results that I basically try to do one thing a day. Maybe we do two. In the case of Walmart, for example, was two trades, same stock symbol. So I like to stick on one thing, and if I have one good winner, 
then that's it. I stop. So it's not like I keep trading and trading and trading. If we have a winner, like we do winner Macy's, boom, that's it. I'm done. So, and Macy's actually kept going. That was one that kept going all day. But we did the morning and we stopped. So I really think that it's very important for traders, day traders, active day traders, especially if you're doing this for a living, to stop when you're up. Not to just say, oh, I'm going to trade all day. Because if you take a good trade in the morning and your goal is to make a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred dollars a day and you're up in the morning and you're out and you had the move, stop. I say no piggy targets, okay? Again, if something's still dropping, you can stay with it. But the point is to just chunk it out. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. So I was on a couple days in TV in here. Again, September was slower. There was a bunch of days we didn't take any trades at all. Apple was a huge winner, and that was along on uh, September 11th, okay? You can go look at the chart of Apple for that. If we have time, I can go over it at the end. And then uh, October has been really, really strong. Strong start to the month of October. Absolutely no losers. Now, it's only been a week, but we, we're on track. So my read on charts has been amazing so far this year. Um, and, you know, I've got a lot, a lot of eyes on me because I've been on national TV. But I tell you, 10 years doing this now, I started out 2008. I started trading. When you've been doing something for a very long time, you get better at it. And I only do this. So that's one of the reasons I'm so good at reading charts is I only do this. You don't have to be a jack of all trades to make money in the market. You only need to do one thing and then you plop it on with size, okay? So trading is a skill. How do you get the skill? How do you learn it? You do it. It's like riding a bike or playing a musical instrument or playing a sport. But when you're all over the place and not focusing and doing a million different things, you never get good at anything. And I think that's one of the biggest, biggest mistakes that traders make. People think they need to learn a about a lot of different things, but then they never get good at anything, and they do too many different strategies, and they're going long and they're going short, and they do the same stock on the same day, long and short, and they're all over the place, and they never get it right. So I have um, not gone down that road. I have stuck on gaps immediately almost since I started, within the beginning period when I started. I made a lot of money in a gap, and I said, oh, there's something to this. Of course, I didn't have all my system down at that point. It took me about three years, but I realized there was something to these gaps. And I realized you can make a lot of money trading gaps because they have a lot of volatility and they have a lot of momentum. So I prepare in the morning before I trade, before I even take anything at all. And I decide what I like. I decide what to do. I decide if we're not trading. I decide what's the good ones. I even figure out the targets, the resistance, the support, all of the things that I need to be watching on the open. Because when the live day starts, there's a lot going on. You're looking at the market too, okay? Um, any other questions here? Okay. Um, so if you've had a difficult year, the best thing I can say for you is don't let it screw up the rest of the end of your year. Just because you've had a hard beginning part of the year, most of the year, or even, even 2017 if you have a difficult year trading, don't let it screw up your future. Don't give up on trading. Don't give up on the market if you've lost in the past. You know, chances are you found me if you found me or interested in anything I have to say today for a reason. You need to hear something new or something different. And I think the biggest message that I have to people is the focus, okay? But if you can learn how to trade and you can be successful in it and, and, and plop it on with size, you absolutely can do this for a living and you can work for yourself. And the nice thing is you can work from home. Now, there are many, many different types of traders. I kind of alluded to this earlier. Today we're going to really focus on day trading, but you could use my system for swing trading and you can use it for options, okay? But you really need a strategy. One strategy is all that you need to be successful and for me it's gaps. And not only that, I focus mostly on shorts, which I said, okay? And it is helpful to have a mentor, which is the support of the trading room. Not that you can't trade on your own. If you do my class, you can trade completely by yourself. I don't hold anything back. I teach you everything in the class. But having someone to make the live calls or say this is a good one, like Costco, definitely is a help. Now, if you've never day traded before, what do you need to get set up? Well, you have to open up a brokerage account. You can open up a retail account or you can open up a proprietary day trading account. If you want a referral for a broker, you can ask me. But there's a million places out there. However, they give different margin. What is margin? Margin means you don't need the actual cost if you're buying Facebook, for example, and it costs $160 a share, you don't need $160 in cash to buy Facebook or short it. You trade on margin. The broker and where you trade gives you the margin. Could be two to one, could be four to one, could be 10 to one, okay? But if you're a day trader, you're flat on all trades before four. If you wanna do options, all you need is a, an options account, which is not a margin account. And if the trade costs a dollar, that's all that you're paying, the cost of the trade, okay? 
And we will go over some option examples here too, but you can use my system for that as well. The nice thing about options is you don't need margin. So there's certain margin requirements for certain brokers. Again, that's something else that you can look into. But what do you need to do this to day trade actively? You need a brokerage account, you need charts, you need a level two. I use hotkeys, okay? And you gotta have the system and the strategy. And then you learn it and do it. And you can do it from home, which is very convenient. So I also talked a little bit about this. People find trading so hard because there's too many things to do on any given day. Tons of stocks in the market, tons of things to look at. Everybody has a different opinion. People are getting bombarded by emails and all kinds of strategies and system and they never, never stay focused. And even if they try something for a period of time, they go off of it to another period of time. Not only am I focused only on gaps, but I'm really focused on the beginning part of the day between 9.30 and 10. So if I don't see anything and we don't take a trade by 10 o'clock, we're probably not doing anything that day. I gotta see the setup in the first 30 minutes of the day, preferably the beginning open. That's when I see it. I can tell when I see a trade, when I see what's happening, not just the rating system in the pre-market, but also into the open. I can see if it's gonna work or set up or we're gonna do it or I'm gonna flip off and look at something else. So if I'm not in something by 10, chances are we're not doing anything that day. There's nothing good. So my focus is, is on the strategy, mostly shorts, and time of the day, okay? Any questions? So focus on a set period of time. Even narrowing it down to that, you get better, you get good, you get good at reading that time frame. And again, I choose this time frame because most of the times it trades outside of the market. You don't need the market for this. And many day traders don't trade this period of the day. So you have smoother moves and you have bigger moves and you have more momentum moves. And what you want big moves as a trader. If something drops a dollar and you're short 5,000 shares, what are you gonna make? Five grand. So you need a big move. And the shorter the time period, the better, because guess what? Less your risk. So if you could take a trade and get in and get out in five minutes, guess what? That's a lot better than having to get in and get out in two hours and waiting for it to go. Chances are you'll make more money if you learn how to trade this period of the day, but most traders don't know how to do it, don't trade it, and don't even look at anything until after 10 o'clock. And why? Because usually the market situates itself by 10 o'clock. Not always, but usually, okay? So a lot of people trade with the market. I do not. Anyways, one of the benefits, again, of day trading is no overnight risk, in and out. You can put in limit order stops to stop you out. helps you control yourself. And also, you can take bigger positions because you're trading on margin and it's quick. It's in, it's out, it's in, it's out. You chunk it out. You, I give targets, we look at the targets, but it's really chunking it. It's not necessarily about holding every trade to a bigger target or a piggy target. Yes, you will get trades like Costco and Apple and Facebook, but not every trade runs that big. Sometimes it's a baby one, okay? Actually, today was a baby trade. I don't have it in here. Today was KR, it was a short. We did a late entry, it was still in the morning. It was a baby move. So how do you make money consistently? Follow the system, follow your rules, follow the time frame, follow the gap rating. Don't be a pig. Stop when you're up. I mean, these are, I'm just, I'm giving you tons of free helpful tips here, okay? Any questions from anyone else so far? Anyways, when you are looking to trade, you can have incredible returns. You saw the Costco trade. We're gonna go over the Facebook option too. It's just, you've got to find something that's gonna move. And I do tend to trade stocks that have a lot of volume. Uh, you would probably know the name of the company. You would probably recognize it. Facebook, Apple, Amazon, you know, KR. You would know, you would, oh, I heard of that before, you know, Best Buy. Maybe what? You would have heard of the stocks because people trade them. People are doing stuff with them. But you got to know day trading is not investing. You're producing income. You're just taking the money out and you're just getting the move. It's not investing. This isn't buy and hold. And a lot of people don't understand that. But whether you're going long, even as you're a day trader or whether you're showing as a day trader, it's not holding. Okay. You can hold options for a couple of days, but I don't even consider that holding because it's not investing. You're not buying the stock outright and then receiving the stock certificates and then holding it for you know five to 10 years. That's not what this is. Trading is you're active, you're calling the move, you're playing it for a set time frame. Whether you're playing it for a couple of days or a couple of minutes, that it depends on what you're doing. Uh, let me look at the next question here. Hold on, I'm sorry. Uh, what account size 
Hold on. What size account is needed to apply your system using options? There's no, there's no, the minimum size is whatever, wherever you open up the account. There's no minimum size to do options that I set. It's the broker. Wherever you can open up an options account, as long as you can place an options trade, you can, you can trade my system. There's no minimum that I give for it. There's no minimum I give for anything other than what the broker requires. The same thing for day trading. If you are actively day trading with a retail account, they're gonna give you a four to one margin and you need a minimum of 25,000 to be in and out day trading. If you're gonna open up a proprietary day trading account, most places, at any decent place will require 2,500 minimum. That depends on the place you're opening the account and they'll give you a 10 to one margin. It's not my system. My system can be traded anywhere that you can place the trade. So you need an active day trading account or an option account. There's no minimum. And obviously there's no maximum. The minimum is wherever you can open it to place the trade. It's not set by me. What exactly is the time frame of trading? Time of the day that we're trading the day trades is usually in the morning, the first half an hour, an hour of the day. Unless you get a big one like Costco and you want to hold it all day, but some people did not. Some people had to go. Some people got out of it. It was up. Some people didn't hold that trade out to the drop. Some people didn't didn't want to hold it. It was working. It was up money in the morning early. So there's as far as the time frame, you gotta be there in the morning the day trade between 9 30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, minimum. That's a minimum. Now sometimes we're longer, but that's not every week. That's not even every, you know, once a week. 9.30 and 10 is the minimums. And I think I missed another question here. No, no, I don't look at level two indicators, no. Um, no, I don't look at any of that stuff, if that's what you're talking about. I, this is it, I read the chart. I could, look at, give, I could look at any chart anywhere, anything in the world, any ticker symbol, if I never looked at it, I'd read the gaps, I'd tell you where it's going, and tell you the trend, that's how good I am. <laughs> I call this market amazingly well too, by the way. So this is it, this, but you know, I'm just looking at FTX right now, but it's, it's pure technical analysis reading of gaps that I call it. I'm telling you, you need a level two to trade actively. Okay, let's get into this here. FTX, this was again back in September, but it was a good one. Stock gap down, here's the one minute chart. Open, drop, boom. Could have sold it off in here aggressively, or you could have waited here, or you could have waited here and got the drop. All you need is this here, or here, or this whole thing you could have gotten. All you need is this though, or all you need is this though, or this even here you could have done. You just have to get it. That's the point. So now we're talking about advanced and beginner. Advanced risk in this one was $2,600. Beginner risk was what, $260. So I'm showing you here with 100 shares, if you had done the trade in FDX, which I'll go back and show you, entry was 245.65, you could have made what? $285, that's a good trade. If you risk 260, you're looking to turn it over one. You wish 2600, you would have made 2850. So it was a little bit more than one here. Here's the position cost on retail and prop account so that you would know. So on a prop account here, you could have taken 100 shares, you would have needed $2,456.50. That's it, and you could have made $285. If you can make $300 a day, guess what? It's $1,500 a, uh, $1, a week, and that is a decent amount of money because if you think of it, $1,500 a week, you say, oh, that's not enough. I wanna make that every day. Yeah, that's great, but if you have a small account, that is really, really good, and if you look at it on a monthly basis, it's $6,000 a month, and if you look at it on an annual basis, it's over 72 grand a year. So the bottom line is that's really, really good. You can't look at this and say that you wanna make, you know, all this money if you have a small account. Start with what you can afford. $250 a day, $300 a day. It adds up, people. It adds up. Now I'm gonna go back here and show you this again. This was, this was a late one. Late meaning we didn't do it right out of the gate, but we still did it and got out. Early in the morning, short it, boom, out. That's it. That trade was this, boom, boom. 10 minutes. Um, someone's asking about Forex. Is this why we're addicted to the stock market? This, I'm talking about the stock market. I don't do anything with Forex and I never did. Why? I think it's too risky. You don't get enough setups, you don't get enough trades. The Forex market only has one gap because it only closes once in a week. So I will not be discussing Forex, sorry. Uh, any questions about this? So this was a gap. I'm gonna go back here. This was this day chart that I showed you earlier in the morning, close to your gap down. So this was the gap 
But then here's the play. And then obviously here's what you could have done if you had risked $260, if you'd risked $2,600. So I'm showing you here how you can use this and do it. And you don't need a million dollars to do it, even though the price point was not cheap. I mean, FDX is, you know, not a cheap stock, but again, well known. You're like, oh, FedEx, okay. So you're familiar with these things, but you got to know what to do with it. You got to know, and this is what you'd learn in my class. When this, when you see the stock gapping down overnight, you say, wait a minute, it's gapping down to support. Is it a long? Should I buy it? Is this a good buy? Should I short it? What's it going to do? You, you got to get in it before the move happens. That's how you're going to make money. And again, I'm never flipping them. Now, how do you get to the point where you can support yourself doing this? What's the difference between making 260 bucks or 2,600? Or 2, it's a size. It's only the, sh it's just a size. So you can take 1,000 shares, 2,000, 4,000. The size I take and everything varies. Why? Because the difference between the entry and the stop changes. I might take a 50 cent stop one day, the next day it could be a dollar. How do I know? I don't know until it sets up, until I see it live. And obviously the price of the stock has a lot to do with that. So you don't know until you see it, but your risk needs to be the same on every single trade. So if you want to risk 250 bucks, then your, your share quantity will vary, but your risk should be around $250 every trade. And again, it could be 260. I mean, this is not a static thing. You're just trying to get in it. You want to get it. You don't want to miss it because you're trying to be so exact that you miss the trade, but it definitely has a lot to do with your consistency and your profitability. Because if you take five trades and one is a loser and four are winners, you want to keep the four winners. You don't have one losing trade outweigh four good ones. Okay. So that's why we use stops and I call the stop in the room, but this is a nice way to trade because you can be done in the first 30 minutes. Again, it's up to you if you want to hold it or not, and you can work for yourself. So a lot of people, have other jobs they they're transitioning which is fine but if you have no idea what to do and you're waiting and thinking about doing this you're just you're just letting time go on you can be in the room and take the trades in the first half an hour first an hour of the day and figure it out while you have another job and when i first started out 2008 like i said i did two jobs for a while until i made enough money to quit i was doing mortgages but i wanted to find a new career and that's one of the reasons that i began in the market but I only focus on one thing. You do have to be strict. Having me as a mentor in the room definitely helps. And, and like I said, when you think about the numbers and break it down and support yourself, six grand a month, that's, that's a decent amount of money. A lot of people could support themselves on that. And a lot of people, when they think about it, they will have these huge numbers in their head. But really, if they just made 300 bucks a day, they'd be perfectly fine. They'd be a lot better off. Instead, people lose, 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 lose. And because they're trying to make these huge amounts of money and get PE trades all the time. It doesn't work like that. It's the consistency. It's the high win ratio. It's stopping and taking the loss some days when the trade doesn't work or not trading some of the days when there really isn't anything to do. Uh, I have another question here. Hold on. How do you find a stock in such a short period of time? It's not a short period of time. First of all, you can look at night at four o'clock. Stocks gap in the evening, four o'clock Eastern time. Sometimes, usually things are reported by five-ish. You could look from four to six at night. Or you get up in the morning, get up early. I get up very, very early in the morning. I'm an early morning person, but I usually start scanning maybe like around 7.30. Open up the room at 8.30. If you get in the room at 8.30, an hour is plenty of time to scan. So you have an hour to scan in the morning. That's not a short period of time. One hour, you have to prep. And the more time you prep, the better you get. Some people only sign in the room at nine. I think a half an hour is kind of cutting it, but a lot of people just go by what I say. A half an hour is kind of tight, but I give myself as long as I need to. Today's, what I said was KR. KR. You can, you can look it up. I don't know if we're gonna have time to look it up, but it was Kroger. Um, any other questions? Anyways, the nice thing is you can work from home, obviously. Uh, I closed the room yesterday. I figured yesterday I'd be dead. We didn't do anything. It's nice to have a three-day weekend. You don't, you don't have to do this five days a week if you don't want. You want to take off? Take off. You want to trade? You want to trade. You are working for yourself when you do this, and you do have an unlimited income potential. It's one of the reasons I got into the market because as a mortgage broker, I had unlimited income potential, but then the, the banking restrictions changed. The guidelines changed for mortgage brokers, and so then I said, wait a minute, I wanna do something else that I have an unlimited income potential. 
So I found out about the market. It's just, you, you, there's, a, there's a risk to reward benefit. If you wanna do this, it's gonna cost money to learn my class. It's, there's gonna be a learning curve for you. You gotta to listen to what I say. It's about what you're willing to do to get there. It's not like you just sign up on the dotted line and all of a sudden, boom. There is a cost to learn my system. And if you've been training before in the past and you've done many different things and haven't learned anything good or have learned stuff that doesn't work, that's, that's been a cost for you too. It's not like anyone rolls out of bed and is just born, you know, learning how to trade. So everybody goes through the process. Remember the staircase. You're stepping up the staircase. It's a path to financial freedom. It's not like you sign in the dotted line and you're there in a second. It is a path. And even if you come to my class, you're probably going to have a learning curve. But that's why I tell people, listen to what I say. Take my calls. Join the room. Be a part of it. Do what I do. Okay, take the trades. Follow the system. No piggy targets. But the nice thing is you can do this and be out quick in the morning. And how do you learn it? You learn it in my rating system. It's a 26 point checklist. So I'm looking every day for stocks that are gapping down first. Then I look for gap ups. It measures the gap by writing them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, a big move in the day. Number three, early confirmation of the bias and a move between 9.30 and 10 and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. So uh, at least a turnover of one. Some trades are three to one or more, okay? But you're chunking it out when you're doing it. Now I'm gonna go over the Facebook option trade here. Was, oh no, we don't have any other questions. Okay, I'm caught up. So this was, this, is, this was a classic Melissa call here because even people that were in the room wanted to kill this trade and it worked. So I called this trade, I called a put in Facebook. I called a put in Facebook here in the state, it was the 24th. Stock post here, gap down, boom. I called the trade in the morning in the pre-market, before the market even opened, although you can't take it into the open. Then the stock rallied for a week. Some people did kill the trade, they couldn't hold on to it. Trade was down first, then it broke and went, it was a big one. I called the 160 puts and the 155 puts. So this was a nice move. So this was to buy the put, but the trade was down before it went. Actually, this is through this Friday, but no one should still be in this. It had such a nice move and went through the strike. So if you did this in here, okay. Oh, actually, this is the day trade. I showed you here, this is the day trade from before. Well, I'll go back to that. <laughs> I didn't, I, I guess, so. no, here, I know I put the option in here. Where did I? Oh, here, here was the option trade. So I called the Facebook puts expiring 10 12 160 or 155 i called it in the morning 8 16 but you can't take the trade into the open it was on the 24th this was the day trade i called we day traded it here so the option was the put here and then we did a day trade here anyways going back so this was the day trade share quantity shorted 2000 added to this total share position was 4000 again this is an advanced risk okay $16,720 profit. This is a day trade, though, not the option. Although the option trade was good, too. I, I didn't put this that in here. This was the Facebook day trade. There were two trades in this. One was the put. One was the option. I mean, uh, one was the option. One was the day trade. But you had to hold this down in here. You had to be out of it. Actually, the trade would still be up if you were still on it even today. But there would be... At once you're getting into today's the ninth, the expiration was a 12. I don't think it's a good idea necessarily to hold it if you're through the strike into the last day. Anyway, sorry to confuse you about that. This was the day trade, and this was the beginner day trade. This was with the risk of $260. You could have made 1,672 bucks. Again, a nice move, $5 plus. You didn't have a big size if you did this, only 200 shares. And again, this was the day trade. I don't wanna confuse everybody, sorry. It was on this day here. But this is the daily chart. So I use my system to figure out the put call and then the day trade call. So we didn't day trade Facebook in here. It was a put. But, I, but I'm telling you, the, stock, the trade was down. The stock rallied, the put was down. But then it worked. So when we're in the day trades, they got to work right at ways, which, which this one here did. But I just want to make sure you know the right day here. It was the 28th. But when you're in the options, they may wiggle and jiggle till they go. And when you're in options trades, if you've ever traded op options before, you know the way the volatility is, okay? It's like a balloon where it swells and sinks and pops. And those are the days that you want to get out when the balloon is going and it's 
blowing up the balloon in a big direction in your way, which was the sell-off here. That was a nice call. Sorry, I thought I put the option and one in there, but I didn't. Anyways, here, here was the trade that I sent out. But you can't do these until after the open. Anyways, it's the same system. You can do the options. You can do the day trades. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. Again, it depends what type of account you have. I think the best thing is to do both because you can make money doing both. And sometimes, I mean, things like Amazon, I mean, some of them are so expensive, the stocks to day trade, like we're not day trading Amazon, but you could do an option in that. So it definitely, I think, is, is important because some stocks have really big moves and you can trade them and you can afford them if you do the options, but some of them are just insane, some of these price points anymore. Netflix is another one. It's touch and go now. I mean, the price is getting really high. Anyways, my system is called the Golden Gap System. The Golden Gap System is a 26-point professional get bearish gap rating system, focusing first on the shorts. If I don't see a good short, then we'll do a long. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in the stock, and that's how you're going to make money in the market. Whether you go long or short, if you can predict where the stock's going to go and take the trade before it goes, you can make money. So one strategy is all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. In fact, it's not going to do anything for you at all. You can talk and talk and talk about it, but unless you actually know how to make cash, there's, there's no point to trading. Even if you're a, you're a wealth of information, if you can't turn it into profit, you're wasting your time and you're wasting your money, your hard earned money, okay? So my system is based on reading institutional moves, institutional money and the price patterns and gaps. Who's in control? The bulls or the bears? That's what I'm looking for in the gap to see what's gonna happen in the live day, all right? Remember the reason you trade is to make money. I know it's fun and everything else like that, but if you're losing, it's pointless. It is a waste of your time. So you gotta be profitable. And if you are doing something and you're not profitable, you may be not disciplined, that's true, but you gotta be honest with yourself. A lot of times it is the structure of the system that you're doing that simply is not good enough and does not work. So if you have the time to trade between 9.30 and 10, then you could do what I know. Uh, you like the fast trades, or unless you wanna do the options, they take a little bit longer. Again, if you have a passion for reading charts in the market, you can work from home. And if you wanna do this for a career, it's definitely something that I can teach you. So I teach a class, it's called the Golden Gap Course. Next class is in November, November 3rd and 4th. Class, it's $54.99 US dollars from nine to five Eastern time, it's all weekend. Class is online, you can be anywhere in the world and take it. If you're interested, email me. And I teach a trends class. Total combo price for this is $59.99. The trends class though is October 22nd. So you'd have to sign up by then to get this. You save $500. And I'm doing a Columbus Day special. It was only through today. So if you're interested in this, you'd have to sign up today. I started it yesterday. I know we're here at the webinar, but I'm, I'm telling everybody I'm offering 30% off the letter. The, the letter for the options trades, you get them emailed to your inbox, like you saw on the Facebook for one year, is $49.99. So I'm offering 30% off through today for Columbus Day. You'd save $1,500. It's $34.99.30. So you wouldn't have to do the class to sign up for this letter. You get all the trades for the year, but you're not going to get the day trades. In order to be in the day trading room, you have to do the class, and that's not until November. And if you want a trial, you can email me if you want a trial between now and then, if you want to sit in another room, or even this week. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? I do think that it's gonna be a good calendar year, end of the year here. It's been a strong year so far, and the market uh, market's gonna be wiggly jiggly, I think probably until Friday when the bank's report will have to see. But I do think that the close of the calendar year 2018 is gonna be very interesting considering the way that we started and we traded in a range for a good six, seven months of the year. We finally broke out of that range, made new highs, and now we're dropping the last couple of days, so we'll see where we go. Yes, I do have a trial period it's for one week. Email me at melissa at thestocksquish.com if you'd like a trial. Email me if you want to sign up for the newsletter. This offer for 30% off ends today. Email me if you have questions. Call me if you have questions. And uh, any other questions? You do not need to take the course to subscribe for this letter. That's what I'm saying. To be in the live trading room to get the day trades, you must do the class. This is the letter. This is not the day trading room. You would get the trades emailed to you. Trades are sent to your email. You do not have to do the class to sign up for the newsletter. 
this is a cheaper way to get some of my calls. You don't have to be in the room if you have a job or you can't be there. Sometimes I call trades in the middle of the day. So you get the trade email to you, you take it, you manage it. You're not in the room and you don't have, there's no prerequisites for this. This is on sale through today and there's no prerequisites and it's a way to, to tiptoe your way into doing the trades and, and I give the targets on the trades as well. So I say the strike and the targets and you can email me if you have questions about where to get out but I usually also do videos which I send out of updates or whatever and say hold it or this or that or whatever is going on. And so like Costco, I sent out an email Costco, I said exit this, exit this by the end of the close today. So that was, I called to put in Costco, I didn't put that in here, but that one was, I said get out, get out by the end of the day. And, and you see if anybody held it, then it reversed. That was not a long term short, but it was a good day trade short. You do not have to do the class to do this letter. So it's a way to tiptoe in and you take the trades and, and you make money, you can save up the money for the class. I do think it's important to do the class at some point, either way, so that you learn what we're doing. Good question, Holly. Listen, we're out of time here, people. Have a wonderful webinar for the rest of the day. Good luck to the other people. Thank you for having me. Any other quick questions? Okay, have a great day.